Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we cover, we cover everything photography, stories, news, history. I'm Chelsea, this is Pixel, and this is Tony. You can listen to us on your favorite podcasting app, so subscribe and give us a review. You can listen to us while you're driving or exercising or editing photos or something, or you can watch the video on YouTube, that's so cool. Today's episode is about stock photo stories, and we have to warn you up front, this is not safe for work. There's gonna be some inappropriate language and some weird photos of be us, unfortunately. Yeah, because that's how things go in the stock photo world. Yeah, you don't know where your picture's gonna end up, and sometimes it's disgusting. And sometimes it's shocking. So if your kids are with you, don't bore them with this anyway. It's not right for them. Uh, first, a quick plug. This video is sponsored by Northrop.photo, where we have our art and science photography bundle, which has over 10 hours of really intense video training for the people who want to take it to the next level. Head to sdp.io slash art science to check it out on our store and use the coupon code STOCK50, STOCK50 for $50 off that video training bundle. You can get it on an SD card too, which is cool because then it's reusable. That expires uh, June 3rd, so hurry cool. up. Uh, first of all, our stock, we got into photography largely doing stock, stock photography. I did stock wildlife photography for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then we got into more commercial stock photography, especially during that boom of micro stock when it was so huge. And it was so Probably much a decade fun. Ago. It was a lot of fun. I know people make fun of stock and hey, you have every right to, it's pretty silly, but it's a really fun creative exercise to tell a story in one photo. Well, what is stock photography? Uh, stock photography is when you take a picture that you think someone will want, you put it up on a stock site, and then people can buy it for really cheap. Some sites are better than others, but... Yeah, so a designer will use it and they'll drop a photo into a web page or they'll use it as a book cover. Uh, but yeah, you take these pictures proactively and then just hope that somebody finds it useful. And we have done a lot of this. I went through, when I was digging through the examples I'd saved, I had thousands of examples where people had used our photos on the web yeah. or in, in print and stuff. And so if you're a photographer and you just want to be published, stock photography is a cool way to do it because you can definitely get thousands of photos out here. And I, I compiled a bunch here if you're watching, like here's one of me uh, slicing bread and they've put some brand name on the apron that I was wearing and they've written most powerful major branding power on it. And it's a picture of me. Like I'm endorsing it or something, but it's not me. Here's a photo of a billboard that somebody found in Lebanon. And you are looking directly into the camera and holding up three fingers. Yeah, we thought that'd be cool. I'm like, people want fingers, right? Some of my greatest ideas, you know. That's how stock photo goes. You want to convey <laughs> a simple message like the number three. Yeah. But you want that eye contact because that's what some, will get somebody to look at the photo. So we have pictures of you with one finger, two finger, three fingers, all your Peace fingers. Peace sign, a thumbs up, which I'm most proud of. I mean, I had to really work hard to kind of master this kind of modeling. Uh, here's a book cover for the book Ni, Rab Ni, Rabietos, Ni Rabietas Ni Conflictos, uh, where it's I am, and my daughter Madeline are back to back and our arms are folded and we're both looking at each other cross as if we'd been in some sort of fight because that's the kind of thing that books and articles are about, like parents fighting with children. So we just found a simple way to capture that. And sure enough, later it turns out it's a book cover. Uh, here <laughs> I'm- Drugging Our Children. <laughs> another book, yeah, Drugging Our Children, where you took this photo, my, of course. My dog just got down. She wasn't just raptured. And I <laughs> just want you to know that if you're watching. And I'm handing Madeline a pill with a glass of water and she's irritated about it. Yeah, so just, just to also fill you in on kind of like the decision-making process of stock photography. I can remember at that time, um, a really popular topic in the news was like, whether you should medicate your children for ADHD. And so it was like, hmm, maybe if we have Madeline kind of refusing a pill, it will end up somewhere. And sure enough, it like, as we expected, that's how it was used. We should do a dedicated video for like, how to create stock photography. Yeah. Uh, here's one where it's for some sort of self-defense and it's um, Spanish language. And I found that, your pictures are really popular in uh, Latin countries and Middle Eastern countries, probably because of your distinct skin tone. Uh, it's interesting that different parts of the world want models with different features. Actually, it was kind of a dehumanizing experience because you don't think of how you look objectively that often, but um, I realized there's a lot of blonde haired, blue eyes models in the US and I was not getting picked up there as much as like the Middle East or Greece or Turkey was really popular. So I was kind of like, oh, that's right. 
I, I became just a gray-haired guy. Yeah, you're just and a gray-haired And you will see the guy. types of work that gray-haired models get. Yeah. Uh, here, it's you modeling on the cover of Publishers Week Weekly uh, for some sort of fitness thing that they were doing. Uh, and to get a magazine cover, that's cool, right? Here's you with a full page spread inside another magazine and you're just, you just have a spoon in your mouth and a bowl in your hand and you're like looking off into the distance like you like whatever you just ate. I wish <laughs> this was ice cream and not yogurt. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that like, I'm just eating and thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just pictures that can, can connotate some sort of feeling. Uh, here's you and Madeline having breakfast and it's in some major magazine, uh, healthy something. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, weight loss for men over 40. This is the kind of picture I get picked for, and I'm just standing on a scale, like, weighing myself. Yeah, I mean, we knew at that point we had to just cash in on you being a white-haired white guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, more fitness stuff. Okay, so my first big story. This was one of the most exciting moments of my life. I was walking through the Target and walked past the magazine aisle, and I did a double take because there was a picture of you on the cover of Yoga Magazine. Yeah. And I was like, this was my first magazine cover and I just stumbled across it in Target. Like I didn't know anything about it ahead of time. And I went and grabbed it and sure enough, it's you. Yeah. And when we me. showed this to people, everybody asked you, Chelsea, how many years have you been studying yoga? No, that's not what people said. They said, you don't even do yoga. People were very mad at me. <laughs> and the story behind this picture was that uh, you told me to do a yoga pose so I did that and you were like that's not even a thing and I was like it's a thing just take a picture like we kind of were jokingly ribbing each other because I know nothing about fitness I was just like this is probably it just do so it just kind of like folded one arm across the other like you're doing some sort of stretch or something that's probably a stretch well there you go Let's cover see. of yoga oh, yeah, magazine <laughs> for that effort <laughs> um, so that was really exciting after this a lot of people saw that we shot a magazine cover and they came to us with requests like Hey, maybe you could get me on a magazine cover. Or maybe you get my kid on a magazine cover. Like, every good-looking person they knew, they just thought, they should be on a magazine cover. That'd be cool. Someone actually said, if you could be on a magazine cover, so-and-so could. Could you get him on a magazine cover? I was like, true, not the hottest <laughs> lady, but did you have to just say it? <laughs> <laughs> What's the story behind this uh, pamphlet here? Oh, yeah. I went to the gym to, uh, like, to get training, and they handed me this pamphlet um and i said oh that's me and the guys laughed at me and they're like is that what you want to look like and i was like this is literally my body before i ate every taco so please <laughs> please stop judging. please everyone you know you have to have a sense of humor to put yourself in stock photography because if the photo's silly people make fun of you and we would go into it intentionally making silly photos sometimes I would see how silly they could be and still get accepted and you know some people take themselves very seriously and they were very put off like I wouldn't want to show up there I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want that on display and my thing is like you know what this is just funny and I'll look back at this and it will be funny to me but also it's humbling because um, if people see you looking good they say mean stuff like someone told me I wouldn't look like that forever on the yoga magazine yeah. and like they wanted me to know I wasn't like a big shot and stuff. Like people will really, really step up to do the good deed of putting you in your place if yeah, you ever show if, up. If people think you're starting to feel good about yourself, they'll try to correct that. <laughs> you can't have stop people with self-esteem. Stop having fun. Okay, so here's the worst and most embarrassing one. Um, also my proudest moment. <clears throat> we were in a very nice hotel room in like Tokyo or someplace. Uh, where were we? I don't know. So Osaka. And it was such a nice hotel room, we decided to do a little photo shoot there. Um, and we did a series where we were in bed. I don't have a shirt on. And some of them were happy. Some of them were just sleeping. Some of them, you're awake and noise is keeping you up. And in this one particular shot, I am looking at you like, uh, hey, let's not fight about this. And you're looking, uh, you're looking away from me with your arms folded and you're very mad. Yeah. And I remember we had a discussion when we were taking this couple fighting was because we would think of the theme of the photo and, and what might sell. So it was my job to go edit the photos and then you put them on the stock site and you keyword them, couple fighting, angry couple, couple in bed, man without a shirt. But then I look at it and I'm like, erectile dysfunction. 
<laughs> boner won't work. Uh, uh, like all these kind of sexual dysfunction, ED. And I think, I don't know what's going to happen to this photo, but if something does, this is the best joke I've ever played on Tony in my life. And it's like the joke that keeps giving me pleasure because it still shows up everywhere. Oh, it's timeless. <laughs> uh, you were the face of Cialis. Yep, uh, on <laughs> on their French website, it was literally like the official website, it was me. I love I that. I was the French boner pill guy. You're welcome. And this particular you. picture can be found in about four million places on the web. I know. Wherever something is trying to spam you with boner pills, there's Tony and Chelsea fighting over. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It really backfired because I saw one that was about a, my sexual dysfunction. And I was like, hey, whoa. That's not the way that joke was supposed that was to go. That was too far. <laughs> I want to take a second and just plug our art and science photography deal. It's 10 hours of video training never before seen, not anywhere, not on YouTube, and it's more intense than we could get into in YouTube. It's nothing that we could possibly make a clickbait title out of. It's stuff that you really need to know, like yeah. learning to see, learning to appreciate how time changes photographs. Um, being able to watch TV or movies and extract important photography and video lessons out of it for things like composition and lighting and storytelling. We also get deep into the science of how a camera works and how to take your sharpness in your photos to the next level. So you can check that out at sdp.io slash art science and if you want $50 off, use the coupon code STOCK50 which expires on June 3rd of this year. There are so many of these, this picture going around, like this one is labeled, labeled lack of desire, low libido, and then it's a picture of us. And I still get messages from people like, oh my God, I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you this, but I saw your picture and it uh, was it's on an ad for have boner have pills. Eat. And people think I'm going to be very upset, but it's just funny. I have a sense of humor about it. It gets it's weirder silly. than this. Yeah, it gets a lot weird, weird, weirder. Um, here's a article from Fem Guide that says he has slept with a lot of women, and it has a picture of me. This it's not true, by the way. <laughs> well, I mean, you did get a letter for band. I that is what the ladies love, so, and a mathlete like dual letters. You were a mathlete. Um, college humor started using the photo for oh, some yeah. particularly gross. Oh, yeah, that's right. Funny articles. We were the face of STDs for a while. Yeah, thanks for that college humor. Um, <laughs> reasons we're faking it. And then there's a picture of you and me. <laughs> um, this is, I think, the strangest thing that's happened to one of our stock photos. I don't know where I get a message from a friend I went to high school with and hadn't talked to him in like 20 years. And he says, uh, is this you in the Velveeta ad? And sure enough, it's me. Um, and in this particular, Velveeta did um, a Mother's Day thing where this generic stock photo dad was trying to do different things to make his wife happy for Mother's Day, all using Velveeta products. And if you're outside the U.S., if you're in the U.S., of course you know Velveeta. It's super famous. It's Ooh, If you're outside the U.S., it can't legally call itself cheese, so it's a cheese food, and it's like a brick of yellow cheese flavor. I'm a Texan, so Velveeta is the base for every queso dip that you make at home. Little Velveeta, little Rotel, it's good stuff. It's also a key part of most meals in Texas. <laughs> this particular photo is one of us happy together in bed, and you are holding a big box of Velveeta, and they've done some extra processing to it to make our skin tones the same tone as Velveeta. I've always did been they? a little bit orange. I could, I never knew. I did a little before and after. They, our processing was probably over the top to begin with, but they took it to the next level, like really smoothed my skin. I will Sometimes say made me a little bit of a weird color. That was my least favorite part of all the stock photography is it immortalized my really bad editing. So I learned something new. And then I would do it poorly and not know it. And then the picture would show up on a billboard. And I'd be like, oh, I will never live that down. Just another way I've been humbled today by stock photography. The caption for this photo is, Hey everyone, I'm married and I'm bringing to you a pro marriage tip. My wife and I like our cheese the way we like our 300 count bed sheets. Warm, velvety smooth and in bed with us. Oh, it's gross. And then some of the comments. Now everyone that knows made. our secrets. At the time I took this screenshot, it had 865 shares on Facebook. So that's a lot. And 
their campaign was very, very successful. And a lot of people we knew saw it and commented and like came to us like, what is going on? Why are you everywhere for Velveeta right now? It was huge for several days. In fact, it was so big that several major outlets covered the Velveeta campaign just because it was so weird and yet successful. Yeah. Um, people are saying things like, um, that guy looks creepy as hell, almost like a mannequin. <laughs> Yeah, people were like trashed you. That was hilarious. Velveeta, whoever runs your advertisements, fire them because they are weird and not funny. <laughs> uh, Here's you holding. They photoshopped in the quesadillas. I think it was a pie before. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm just standing there with some quesadillas in my hands and big okay. oven mitts and just a big ridiculous grin because I'm a terrible model. <laughs> All I, think I can you do look is just great. stand there and smile. At least I didn't over Photoshop you in that one. Um, here I am originally tossing a salad in this photo, but the people, like good people at Velveeta photoshopped out the salad and had me pudding. tossing in a big bowl of cheesy chocolate dip, which apparently is something you can make with Velveeta. <laughs> uh, hundreds of thousands of people saw these photos. Yeah, I, Maybe got, a, mil, probably I got a millions. lot of emails from people I knew. Um, and then they responded as if they were you in the comments. Oh, right. They just took on my persona. Yeah. So somebody wrote creepy on one of the photos. And then they wrote back with a picture of me saying, uh, Brady, they say time heals all wounds. Well, your comment wounded me so deeply that I took a brisk, brisk, brisk walk into the autumn of 2014 and then sent this status update back in time to let you know that it still hurts. <laughs> and then there's a picture of me and I have just like a gray sweater on and I'm in fall colors. And, but there's a big block of Velveeta in my sweater pocket which is completely weird and just completely non sequitur. Um, at some point, the response was so huge that you actually took a photo of us together just to show that you were a real person. A real person? Yeah, because people were saying you were a mannequin and stuff. It was really weird. Our dog is really Why is she freaking out? You can't dig on a rug. Okay, that's it. I'd love to hear people's questions about stock Ooh, photography. Wait, you did not cover the fact that that you were interviewed about being a stock model and what it was like to be in these campaigns. Yeah, if you Google stock photography Tony Northup, you can see a full interview about it because it is a really weird experience. I mean, we worked with other models, but when you do stock photography, like every stock photographer ends up in some photos because it's so, just so convenient to use yourself as a model. Yeah. Um, and that has been the weird experience is being in all these photos, especially as a member of the photo community where so many people recognize us in just generic stock photos. It's weird to see somebody you know on your bottle of diet pills, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and then you also get phantom sightings where I'd have people texting me, is this you? And it often would not be, but they were just so used to seeing me in weird places that they would assume if it was weird, it was me. So stock photography can be very fun. I'm wondering if any of you have done it. Have you had a similar experience where you've been used in a pretty shocking or inappropriate place? That's fun. Or what's the weirdest place you've seen us? True. Keep an eye out for us now that you know that we're out here. If you like our podcast, please subscribe. And if you like our training series, you can get the Art and Science of Photography. We have it on sale for you. If you use the coupon code STOCK50, you'll get $50 off. That's a pretty good bargain. That expires June 3rd, 2018. So sorry if you're in the future. No head bargain to, for you. Head to sdp.io slash artscience to check it out. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.